We join the riders at the Muldura Motoring, the start for their 24 hour team's time trial event across Victoria. Five riders will start in the team and at least three riders must finish in order to be successful. Commencing at 9am Saturday morning, the team will attempt to ride 770 kilometres at an average speed of 37 kilometres per hour. They must finish at Albury by 9am Sunday morning, 24 hours later. This would secure a world record beating the 15 year old unofficial French record of 762 kilometres. The team having secured the unofficial Australian record of 656 kilometres last year realises the task ahead is the most challenging any one of them have attempted in their cycling careers. As the team lines up for the start, anxiety and nerves are high as six months preparation and thousands of kilometres of training are about to amount to something. Riders have a strict plan to follow. They would stop for a break every 50 to 60 kilometres. There were 12 breaks all up. 10 were 8 minutes long. There were two longer ones for lunch and dinner. 15 minutes and 40 minutes respectively. The day began with a steady wind coming from the southeast, a cross headwind. The prevailing winds for this time of year, however, are northwesterlies. There were two reasons we chose the route we did. One, it was flat, and two, there was a good chance we would have a tailwind. It wasn't to be today. It was crucial now we rode and organised ourselves well from the start. The group dynamics would see the front rider doing a three minute turn, giving protection to the other riders, then filing off and getting on the back of the group again as quickly as possible. It can be up to 20 to 30 percent more efficient to ride behind another rider, especially into a headwind. Our first stop was Hatter. This and all other stops would enable us to rest the legs, rehydrate, refuel, and fill our pockets with food so we can feed on the bike when commencing again. This would take three to four minutes and the remainder of the stop time would be used to rest completely. Alright, just push the start button and it'll go. We got something to cut this. How long do 17, The wind was getting stronger now and we knew if it kept up our already hard task ahead was going to be even harder, especially in the twilight hours between 12 and 5 in the morning, when fatigue and decreased motivation are problems anyway.
Here you see a rider feeding, keeping much needed energy levels up whilst riding. All five riders must feed themselves regularly and keep drinking constantly to fight off fatigue and dehydration. Once these have set in, it is extremely difficult to continue on at an optimum level. Our third checkpoint sees the elements taking their toll with heat and consistent headwinds. Some of the riders are starting to wear down. At this point when you're tired, eating and drinking can be difficult. With all the blood in the legs, digestion doesn't happen easily nor quickly, so foods must be easy to chew and swallow and have a high energy output. As you see here, Guy is putting bananas in his pockets for the next leg of the journey. Bananas are a good food as they provide quick energy, they are easy to transport and eat, and contain potassium. This being essential in muscle contraction, especially in endurance events. Here Nick is doing a lower back stretch. Stretching is also crucial to help loosen up the back and muscles involved. Sitting in one position for long periods of time over a 24 hour period tests even the most flexible bodies. Yep, all right, I'll have it out. I'm behind there for you. Because I'm not going to get a sit off you. You don't get to sit off anybody. I don't reckon you get a sit off. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Oh, we're just in a hurry. It's on the time that you make sure. Swan Hill is our lunch spot where we will have a 15 minute break. Before riders arrive at any stops, our support crew would have to find a suitable place in the town or designated area to set up so we could feed and rest safely. They work tirelessly at every stop, attending to all the riders' needs and demands. Our success was largely due to our excellent support crew, combined of wives and girlfriends of the riders and the film crew who also helped support us when they weren't filming.
At each checkpoint, our cards had to be signed as proof that we had arrived in particular towns along the route. Swan Hill Show Day. They're all at the show. Is that what it is? Thank you. Now you said you're from a shop. What sort of shop? The Old Royal Cafe. Wonderful. You have coke, won't you? Coke. Well, we've got everything in there. Wonderful. I'll be yes. over in 10 seconds. <laughs> Maybe we can just go a little bit past 36, 37, 30, track 5, okay, 36. Okay, fine, fine. But I think five minutes is going to be really valuable. Well, he's got to start trying to eat stuff. Even sipping coffee or something or doing... <laughs> it's no good just doing that. <laughs> no, it isn't, Nick. Even if you throw up. Nick was finding it hard. He was very sick with his stomach upset, unable to eat or drink properly. After a quick discussion, the riders lengthened the break by five minutes in an attempt to help Nick recover. Well, I think he's having trouble. As it, as it is with his stomach, I don't think he wants to see anything else. Yeah, unless, you can, unless you can sip a stamina. But just don't make it too strong. Just a diluted one. Because otherwise it won't go through. Well, if he's not enough, <coughs> it might get his energy back quickly. I've been having them. five minutes and now we waited another three minutes for Derek to come out of the toilet. We let Ken and Nick ride off while Sky and myself waited until eventually we couldn't wait any longer. Derek would have to catch up on his own steam. We could not afford any more delays. group plan now had to be modified as Nick could not come through to the front to do turns. The headwind was still stiff, we had already lost approximately eight minutes and now we effectively only had four working riders until Nick recovered. Our riding speed needed to be approximately 37 kilometres per hour. A three minute turn into a headwind at the front at this pace elicited a heart rate probably between 80 and 92 percent of maximal for the riders. It was a relief to get to the back and rest after doing a turn at the front. I'll tell you in 10 seconds. Two, eight, ten, you're about three minutes. Oh, I'll see that there. Yeah, I'll put it away. Yep, we'll do. Okay, what do you want done with this? Yeah, so we do your 
sprinkles? No. And some um, water, Kat. Plain water? Yeah. With the sun starting to set, we donned our vests and reflector socks. Lights had to be ready to go, as nightfall would happen while we were riding, halfway between two checkpoints. The support crew had a terrible job at night trying to find food and equipment in the limited light available. This on top of being tired already and having to consistently drive, assemble and disassemble every checkpoint. They would do this 12 times all up in the 24 hour period. Some stops were worse than others. This particular one was in the middle of nowhere, so our only light source were torches and primus lamps. From now on, it would be a mental game, trying to get even more out of our already exhausted bodies. You got some of that stuff in those tubes? You want some lepin? No. I like that, Kenny.
want Now even children think that way Or something, Kath. What's that? Coin or a screwdriver or a spoon or something. Yeah. Right, you want a, a coffee? I want a coffee. Yeah, or well, come on, come on. Make a couple of coffees. Ken will have a coffee and a couple of others will probably have a coffee. Oh no, water. You just want water? Yeah, I'll half fill the, the, the void it. with water. Half fill what's yep. what's not there with water. How are you going, Kenny? Just turf the batteries. Any yeah. more cards? Did anyone check the Don't time? Don't yeah. throw them into the bush. Oh, fuck off. Got your card up for me, guy. All the riders were looking tired now, and instructions from the support crew had to be repeated three to four times to guarantee the information had been taken in. You have to try and stay alert and keep thinking, otherwise you want to fall asleep and shut down. Eating and drinking at this stage is crucial. Being so tired, your appetite decreases and you have to force feed yourself at regular intervals. We'll all be set up with lights and everything. The positive right. thing is now you've done that, you're over, well over halfway. You're on time. Yeah. They're all 40s from now on. This next one's only 31. 31. 30. Guys, there's coffee there in the red cup. Can I have a hand, please? Oh, I've got to touch the wind. Just a touch. Nick was still sick and amazingly had hung on and Ken too was feeling the pinch more and more. Going twice. Who wants any more food? Power bar. Okay. You're right. Can you see what you're doing? Somebody got a torch. I 
Joshua had a meeting. From now on they would provide much needed motivation. They were stunned to see how quickly we had deteriorated over the last 60 kilometre leg. They were starting to think it was the beginning of the end. We now had a 40 minute dinner stop. Just the thought of this helped everybody to relax. We knew now we were well over halfway and amazingly on time. Despite the fact Nick had gotten a flat back tyre and had to ride it for the last 7 kilometres into Kahuna. A local newspaper rep had seen us on the road and wondered what the hell we were doing. He interviewed us. It was extremely difficult to answer even basic questions, such as riders' names, etc. Fatigue was definitely taking its toll. <laughs>